Welcome again. Before we can talk about optical isomerism today, I would like you to gather some materials and build a model. You would need to get eight sticks or toothpicks like these and at least four if not five different colors of modeling clay or plasticine or any material that you can find to build these ball and stick models. Of course if you happen to have a molecular model set then that would be perfect for building a model like this. In this model the ball in the middle represents a carbon atom and the four bonds placed strategically at the tips of a tetrahedron represent four single bonds made by this carbon atom. If these four bonds join to four distinct groups, then a very unique phenomenon exists with this molecule. Using your models, I would like you to build a replica of this structure and then to hold it in front of a mirror and construct its mirror image. If you've done that, then you'd expect to have something that looks like this. Now I would like you to try to line up all of the groups on the mirror image with the original model. So we line up the red with the red, the middle green with the middle green, the top green with the top green, but over on this side here we notice that the blue lines up with the yellow and the yellow lines up with the blue. No matter how we try to change the positions, you realize that it's impossible to superimpose one structure exactly over another. Such mirror images of molecules give rise to optical isomerism, and it only comes about when carbon exists in the middle of a tetrahedron, in other words, only when it forms four single bonds to four different groups. An example of such a molecule is the amino acid alanine. Here on this planar diagram, we can see carbon in the middle with the four bonds, each to a different group. Here the amino group, the carboxylic acid group, a hydrogen atom, and a methyl group. Each one a different structure. And the carbon sits in the middle of the tetrahedron. Such a carbon is referred to as an asymmetric or a chiral carbon. And because one such structure cannot be superimposed over its mirror image, then each structure, although having the same molecular formula, is arranged differently in space. This kind of isomerism is called optical isomerism. And each of these mirror images, when isolated and put into a container and exposed to polarized light, each one tilts the plane of polarized light in an opposite direction. Polarized light, to put it simply, is light that vibrates in just one plane, whereas unpolarized light vibrates in multiple planes. So light that's been passed through a polarizer vibrates only in this one plane. And when this polarized light is sent through one optical isomer, it tilts the plane of light in one direction, and when it's sent through the other one, the plane of light is tilted in the opposite direction. These optical isomers are also referred to as enantiomers. Another easy way to understand mirror images and chirality is to take your hand and to hold it in front of its mirror image, your other hand. Is it possible to superimpose one hand over the next? So let's suppose my right glove represents one form of the amino acid alanine and my left glove represents the other form. Suppose this right hand represented the active site of an enzyme and the amino acid alanine had to fit into this active site. 
changes being induced, but eventually a snug fit between the enzyme and its substrate. Consider now the other form of alanine, the form that tilts the plane of polarized light in the opposite direction. If you've ever tried to put your gloves on on the opposite hand, you would know that this is not possible. And in this way, it's relevant to study optical isomers, for although they have the same molecular formula, it's impossible to superimpose one upon the other. And in this sense, it makes them different molecules with different chemical properties and different biological properties.